my tips. Hello and welcome to another Tech by Tips video. First of all, I want to thank a donor to the channel, and this person is Edwin Fernandez. Thank you very much for your donation. It's highly appreciated. You are a rock star. Thank you very much for keeping us motivated in creating these videos for you. Today's video is going to be based on uh, the current situation with the ad blocking community. Uh, right now, you know, I created uh, eight months ago a new video on how to set up Pi-hole after they upgraded to version number two. But still, Pi-hole has been a little bit unreliable. There's a lot of things that they need to fix with uh, version number two. So today we're going to be talking about another alternative that we have, and that is AdGuard DNS. And AdGuard DNS basically does the same thing that Pi-hole does, uh, but it, it has a little bit more features in it. So we're going to be uh, covering what it is and how we can set it up in our NAS and then how we can use it in our network. It basically allows you to block ads, trackers and analytic systems and it helps you to protect your kids also because it has some controls built into it that you can set up in there. So you can set that as a DNS in computers or devices that your kids use and then kind of restrict them on some things. And you can see information about your devices and their usage uh, and all that. And basically here it tells you how it works. You know, it's a um, resolver for your DNS queries. For example, when you say google.com, your browser needs to translate google.com into a series of uh, numbers that represent an IP address. And that request goes into AdGuard. And AdGuard has a connection to other public DNS providers. And then it stores that as a cache uh, locally so that then all your subsequent requests are served from AdGuard D, uh, DNS, which is the instance that you have running. And then it also helps you to, by monitoring those requests, block some things, for example, for your kids, or um, if there's if, if, if your computer is requesting a domain that it's known for, you know, being an ad domain or stuff like that, it can block it. So that's how it helps you to block the ads. But it also gives you like a good dashboard where you can see all the information about how your DNS resolution is working and how it's helping you to stay safe and uh, removing all those annoyances. So that is AdGuard DNS. If we go into GitHub, they have their own repository there, which is on github.com slash AdGuard team slash AdGuard DNS. And in here we can see that it is a public DNS resolver that protects you from ad trackers. And uh, it has three contributors. It doesn't have a lot in here but it's very well made, it's written in Go mainly. So here you have all the information about the application, some screenshots and stuff like that. And they point you to the documentation so uh, you can get to that if you need. Uh, we're gonna be using the official Docker Hub image that we can find here in hubdocker.com. Search for AdGuard slash AdGuard Home. This is where the official image is. So we're gonna be using the latest image so they have a bunch of versions here. You can pick whichever you want, but I want the latest. So we're always uh, on the best, most updated version of the application. Here you can see a little bit of an animated screenshot of how the application works. And it tells you details about it. And here I found out all that I needed to create my Docker Compose file. So I'm going to give you a Docker Compose file already that is going to be ready for you to use. But here's where you can figure out what everything is for if you need to. All right, so let's get this going. First thing we need to know is that we need to have two directories to hold our stuff. One of them is for the configs and the other one is for the data, basically. So what I'm going to do is the data directory, since it mounts it, mounts it to the work directory, which then creates other directories, I'm going to mount it at the root of that container and then it's going to create its own thing, but I'm going to create one for the config. So let's go and do that. To do that, we go into our NAS and then we have in the Docker, we have where the data for the container is going to live and in there we're going to create a, a folder for add guard and in there we're going to create another folder for config then there's going to be another folder that is going to come up here because we're going to mount this top folder to the work directory so it's going to add extra stuff here but that's all that we need we need the add guard folder and inside that the config folder and then for our projects we create a folder and that's where our docker compose file is going to live and that is all that we need to have for the folder structure. So now we can go into container manager and then we can go to our projects and create a project for at guard. And in here, we're going to look for that path in the Docker project. 
this is where our docker compose file is going to be so we select add guard and then we say we're going to create a docker compose file i already have my docker compose file that i'm going to share with you in the github repository so let me paste it there and then we're going to see it on a bigger screen so there we go we're going to add guard yaml and here we have our docker compose file and i'm sorry i was reusing another one and i forgot to change that so the service is one container that is going to be add guard we're going to be using that image that we just saw from Docker Hub, which is AdGuard, AdGuard Home, latest version. We're going to name this container AdGuard. And then here's all the ports that we need or we have to use for this application. I'm going to make it very simple. I'm not going to use like uh, DNS over HTTPS or all that, but here's everything that you might be able to use. In my case, I'm just going to have the basic DNS enabled. And then if you want to use it as a DHCP server, then you would use port 67 for that. I left it there, but I'm not using it. And then the web user interface, the container is going to be listed on port 80, but we're going to expose it on port 8070 in the NAS because usually port 80 is used by Synology for other stuff. So we don't want any problems. So I'm going to use another port. Then if you want to use the HTTPS version, then you would use 443 and then you would put it in a port like 8071, for example. But if you want to use HTTPS, then you need to make sure that you get a certificate and you pass that certificate to the container. It's really not needed in a Synology NAS because you can do the HTTPS uh, if you expose it outside. But I mean, up to you. If you want to do it, here's how you do it. And then in the configuration, we'll see where you specify that. Now, if you're going to use DNS over HTTPS, you need port 8, uh, 853. I'm not going to use it, but I le left it there. And then for the initial setup, you're going to be using port 3000. For some reason, this works like this. So that's how we're going to do it. Then after you set it up, you can come here and comment it out if you want. You can just leave it. It doesn't matter. And then if you want to use DNS script, you would use port 5443. I'm not going to use it. So that's why I have it commented out. And like I said, I'm going to mount the config folder that we created in our NAS, which is this one here, into the config directory inside the container. And the work directory, which is that contains all the data, is going to be mounted into the AdGuard root folder, which is this one here. And then it's going to create other folders inside it. So we'll see that next to the config, we'll have another folder. And then I'm going to say I want it to work using the time zone of America, New York, because, because that's the one relevant for me. And then don't stop the container unless I manually come here and stop it myself. And that's all that we need. With this, we should be able to save it and build it. In my case, it's going to be really fast because I already downloaded the image. So it immediately started the container. And as you can see, that's it. The container is running. We go into the logs. Everything is good. It says that it's listening on port 3000, which is where we do the setup. So that's good. And if you see an, an IP here that is different from your NAS, don't worry about it. That's just the internal IP of the container. But you're going to access it through the IP of your NAS on the port that we set. So now we should be able to go to the IP of the NAS. Let me reset this because this was me testing before. So you see 8070, which is where we should be seeing the user interface is not working because we have not set it up. So we're going to go into port 3000. And now we have the setup for the application. Straight up, it tells you step by step what you need to do. I'm just going to say get started. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to leave the ports as they are because that's how I configured it. So I'm going to say next. And then in here, you have to create a username and password. So I'm going to say add guard. And then let's say add guard one, two, one, two, or something like that. And then next, now we created the user for the application. And then it tells us here, okay, you need to figure out how to connect your devices to the add guard application so that then you can use it. And it tells you, okay, you can make it at the router level, which makes any device that connects to your network use it by default, which is what I would recommend. That really depends on the router that you have. There's so many routers that I would not have. I mean, this video would take forever to go over each one of them. But basically, here they give you the instructions. They tell you, log into the user interface of your router and then look for the DHCP and DNS settings and change that to the IP of the device, in which in our case would be the IP of the NAS. And then if you're going to use it directly on a device, for example, on Windows, it tells you how to do it here. You need to go into the uh, network settings and then you go into uh, the network device and you go 
into the properties and you go into IPv4 and then or IPv6 depending on what you're using and then you change the DNS for the one that you're going to use. We're going to show that in a little bit. And if you have like a phone, an Android, iOS or a Mac, it tells you for all of those. So you can come here, click and see how to use it. Then so we're going to do nothing. I'm just going to go next. And then it says, you know, everything's good. When you click open dashboard, it's going to go to port 80 because that's where the container is listening, but it's not going to work. So just wanted to highlight that. So we click here. You see, it doesn't work. So what we need to do is we need to go to the port 8070, which is the one that we said we're going to expose in the NAS. And when we do that, we get to the user interface for AdGuard. And in here, we're going to log in with the credentials that we created. And once we do that, here we go. We have our user interface for the AdGuard DNS server for our network. But as you can see, there's nothing happening because I have not connected anything to it. So now let's go over that and quickly show how you do that with uh, the, a Windows machine, for example. So in a Windows machine, you would go to the network connections. You would look for the device that you're using to connect to your network. In my case, I'm using an Ethernet cable, so I'm going to be using the Ethernet interface. I'm going to go into properties. In here, I'm going to go into IPv4. I'm going to click properties. And then in here, instead of obtain a DNS server, because that would get the DNS that my router has configured, I'm going to tell it use another one, and then I'm going to give it the IP of my NAS. And then I say OK, and then I say close, and that should configure my computer to start using the AdGuard server as my DNS server. So then if I refresh here, when I start looking for things, let's go uh, into this website that we're going to be using to test that. The first time is going to fail, so you have to give it a little bit of time until it kind of establishes that connection with the... Uh, application and then it, it, it's going to start loading and then you can see here when you refresh boom now we have queries that are coming from our windows machine in my case into the AdGuard server and as you can see you know it was 102 queries 58 of them were blocked and it gives you like the dashboard with the data so this is very good it's at the very beginning straight up tells me you know where that stuff comes from the only problem is since we're running inside a container in the Synology NAS the IPs that we're going to be seeing here are not actually the real IPs. This is basically the IP of the virtual router that is redirecting our traffic from the NAS into the container. That's the only thing. But you very well could just set this up in a Raspberry Pi, for example, in your network, and then it's going to show you the actual client IPs in here. I just wanted to highlight that so you know why you see that weird IP in there that doesn't match your network. Because in my network, that's definitely not the range. And then in here we can see other stuff, like for example, which domains have been queried, which have been blocked, the upstreams that we're using to do the resolving, and all of that. So this is your dashboard. This is where you're going to be coming to check uh, frequently how everything is going on the health of it. Then we can go into the settings. In the settings, we have several things here. If you go into the general settings, here's where you configure uh, how the application behaves. If you want to enable certain things, for example, if you have kids and you want to put this on their devices as their DNS resolver, you can force them to use safe search whenever they're searching for something in Google or Bing or any of those like places that it's showing here, or YouTube, etc. If um, you want to do other things, you have other options here. For example, how long you want to keep the logs. So if you have, for example, a seven day rotation, the logs are going to clear every seven days. If you want to anonymize the client IPs, you can select that here. So you can do all those things here. Then if you go into the settings and you go into the DNS settings, this is basically where you specify the DNS that are going to be the back end where your AdGuard DNS server is going to look for something if it doesn't know what that resolves to. By default, it starts with the DNS 10 quad 9.net. But there's a list here that you can click on this link and it's going to take you to this official website. And there's a bunch of options here that you can choose. For example, if you want to use uh, Google DNS, you click here and it tells you you need to put this as the, um, the DNS you're going to put in the list. So you come here and you add it here. So, you know, that's how you define the upstream uh, DNS servers. So basically, there's a bunch of options here. You can basically read because they give you good information about what everything does 
Now, if you go into the encryption settings, this is if you want to use uh, DNS over HTTPS and things like that. I'm not going to be touching that. I'm not going to be using it. But like I said, if you're going to be using DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS, basically, you need to come here and you need to pass it a SSL certificate or a TLS certificate and the key so that it is able to serve you the traffic using HTTPS. I was not going to do that, so I'm going to ignore that. But everything is well documented here, so you can read it and figure it out. Now we have the client settings. In here, we can define clients that we know in our network. In this case, it's not really very relevant because the IPs are not going to be matched properly because we're running in a virtual Docker network. But if we were running like in a Raspberry Pi or something like that, then you can specify the client and it's going to know, okay, this request is coming from this client, right? And it tells you like what it has found from requests also down here. And then uh, the DHCP settings, this is if you want your AdGuard server to also be the, D the DHCP uh, server in your network. So in that, if you want to enable this, you have to disable the DHCP server in your router and then enable it here so that this is the one that is going to hand out the different IP addresses. That's up to you. I'm not going to be using it, but it's pretty straight up. They have a lot of documentation here. If you go to the filters, here's where you specify what list you want to use to block the ads and the trackers. By default, it comes with the AdGuard DNS filter enabled, nothing else. You can enable add away, which also comes with it. And you can come here and say add block list and then from a list and it's going to give you a list and you can pick others here. You can select it and then uh, it'll include it in here and then you can use those lists to block more domains. So I'm going to leave it like it is right now. I'm not going to do anything. just wanted to highlight that. Then in here is where you put the allow. So anything that you put in this section here is going to be explicitly allowed. It's not going to block it no matter what, even if it's in a list. Then the rewrite is another type of thing you can go through. I don't think most people are going to benefit from this. so I'm just going to skip it. And the block services here, it's, it's very interesting. Something unique about AdGuard. It already has like a list of websites that are famous and applications that are famous. And you can come here and say, okay, I want to block some specific websites. I don't want anyone in my network to access, for example, I don't know, Bilibili, which is a Chinese, uh, like YouTube. Or I don't want anyone in my application, for in my network, for example, to be able to go to 4chan. You can come here, toggle it, save it, and then those domains are going to be blocked. And this is a list they maintain. So just wanted to let you know that this is available here. And then you have also options to do custom filtering rules here. This is more using uh, regex and stuff like that. So I'm not going to cover it, but you can easily read up on this. Then the query log. Here's where you can see what requests you have gotten, what things have been blocked or not, what, what things have been allowed, how long did it take for it to respond and all that. And here's a setup guide, which tells you again, how do you connect your different devices to the AdGuard DNS server? So it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to use, very well documented. It's a robust application. So I recommend you, if you're having troubles with Pi-hole or you just want to try AdGuard, go ahead. As you can see, it's super easy. In less than 10 minutes, we already had it up and running. So go ahead, give it a try. It's definitely pretty useful. So that's going to be it for this video. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. And hit the bell so you don't you do not miss any upload and uh, leave me comments in the comment section below because a lot of my videos are centered on your uh, requests things that you would like to see and i also try to help you out whenever you have issues with an application or something like that if you give me enough information i try to help you out so you fix the problems and get it working and another thing is you should have noticed that there was no ad on my video that is on purpose i'm not monetizing the channel but that means that whenever I go through the effort of creating a video, I make no money. So the effort basically is for nothing. So I rely entirely on your support. If you like the content and you want to support me to continue creating good quality videos for you and tutorials, uh, there's a link in the description below where you can donate using PayPal, like Ed did in the beginning of this video. And there's also a Bitcoin wallet address if you prefer to do it that way. So that's going to be it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.